So welcome to the bonus episode of the Imagine Your Future podcast. Karen and I just want to chat and bring you up to speed on our vision for this podcast. The aim of the podcast is still to inform, educate, and engage our listeners on technology and digital related topics. We have a great lineup of senior execs and thought leaders from various industries scheduled for the year. So please subscribe and stay tuned on LinkedIn and other social channels as we continue to expand the podcast. So today we're really going to have some fun with this session and really give you a chance to learn more about Karen and I. It's ad hoc, it's fun, sit backs, relax, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit. All right, Karen, you ready? Yep. All right. So I'm so excited that you're my co-pilot for this podcasting journey. I mean, this is going to be awesome. I know. I'm excited too. So, and I had an idea for today's episode. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so how would you like it if we were to kick today off with me asking you some questions about the Imagine the Future podcast, you know, as a way of getting to know each other and so the audience can know where we're going in the months ahead. Sound good? All right. Just don't embarrass me. So uh, so let's do it. (laughs) All right. So question number one, this is total softball, so no pressure. What's the point of the podcast and why are we doing it? Yeah. So this is brilliant to start off with. So, you know, you and I both work for ISG. ISG at the end of the day is really a people company and we're an idea company. We're front and center in front of the world's largest enterprises and technology companies that really serve these major enterprises. And, you know, we're really lucky to serve over 700 clients a year, which provides all this amazing insight and data on the mega trends, the impact of the real corporate world. So we try to get beyond the buzzwords of digital transformation just because we really understand what's going on. And you know what? I hate to admit it, but maybe I freely admit it. I'm a geek. I'm I'm fascinated with data. I love Statista. I'm absolutely mesmerized by the common themes that I see across the globe and across our client base. And even when people think that they're so industry focused or vertically focused or geography focused, we're just in this great position to really see these commonalities and help clients speak through this. So I think the podcast really provides that perfect medium to share those insights, have some fun, have an open dialogue with some true thought leaders and industry giants and walk through. And I think as I think about the podcast, we ask questions, we listen, we talk. It's really just kind of a cool way for us to connect with people. And it seemed like live doing on air and, uh, you know, show people a little bit of the ISG magic, I think. I love the ISG magic. So why in this format? Um, Like we produce all sorts of great IP, white papers, uh, POVs, points of views, webinars. What's different about the podcast aside from the two of us? I think everybody listens and learns and, and, you know, takes data in differently. And the podcast is just another form. You know, I love podcasts. I love to read, but I love podcasts just as much. And it really allows me to discover ideas and listen to different perspectives. I learn a lot that way, you know, whether I'm at, you know, working out or doing things else, anything to break away from being at our desk is really important. I think we can also engage differently. We can listen to the conversation. We hear the banner. We hear the normal things, almost like talk radio a little bit or NPR or other things that we listen to. But it really connects in a different way, which to me is really powerful and and. It's it's better than just doing and I think it feels more natural for the listeners as well. OK, so you asked me to participate with you in this uh, big experiment in December. And since then, I've been really thinking a lot about why I said yes. And when you asked me to do this, I was curious, why do you enjoy doing it and what do you hope to get out of it? That's brilliant. I, I mean, I think I got to think through that a little bit. So, so if I go back to the overarching goal of the podcast, it's really to engage, inform, and entertain. And, and I think those three are really important separately. But it's really about connecting with people and really having meaningful conversations, slowing down our thinking a little bit, getting a little deeper into a specific topic, explore the human side of things, the fears, the concerns, the hopes, and really these from, from some fantastic leaders. You know, a couple of weeks ago when we met with Nitin Rakesh, the CEO of Emphasis, you know, one of the questions was, you know, how did he get where he was growing up in a small village in India? And it was such an inspirational story that it just allows us to connect in a much more human way and and really do it in an engaging way. So I, I, I love that. I love that the way we're taking the podcast and what it means. 
But I guess more importantly, why, why did you say yes? <laughs> well, like you, I think I'm a geek at heart. Um, I'm an auditory learner. So I've been addicted to public radio, things like NPR or because I'm Canadian, in my case, the CBC. Um, I've been addicted to that since I was a kid. And to me, a podcast is just a natural extension of both of those things. Um, I also wanted to contribute to ISG in a different way, right? From a practice building perspective, from a, a my own personal brand building perspective. So as a woman, as a you know citizen of the world, I think I was excited about the opportunity to talk about things that matter, um, matter in the big scheme of things, as well as to me personally. And not everybody gets a chance to do that when they're at work. Yeah, no understanding. You are so brilliant. I think our listeners are really going to get a chance to appreciate the things that that you bring to the podcast and just your overall brilliance and how well read you are. But but give me a sense of what kind of things that, you know, especially as a global citizen, you're going to be really interested and in make sure that we we drive forward with this podcast. OK, you're making me blush a little bit here. Um, nah. <laughs> I think, you know, the types of things that I'm interested in are, oh, I don't know, things like uh, technology, how technology deals with diversity, equity, inclusion. That's a big one for me. Um, the unforeseen consequences of automation on things like, you know, insert your country name here. How are things changing globally uh, because of automation? Or, you know, a, a super geeky personal interest of mine is MOOCs. So massive online open courses. The world has been talking about MOOCs now for... I don't know, almost a decade, I think. And even with the pandemic, they still really haven't taken off. So what's the tipping point for that? I'd like to explore kind of the the whys and the wherefores of, of those kinds of topics. Yeah, it's funny because I'm laughing now because I think the MOOCs got disrupted by the MOGs, the, the massive online gaming. They didn't have yeah. time for learning anymore, just right. gaming. <laughs> That's funny. I agree. <laughs> Too funny. I, I am honestly really impressed. So let, let me ask you a couple of questions. If okay. you were to look back at your career, mm -hmm. um, who, who are the mentors that really forged who you are and really, you know, brought you to where you are? And if you think about the podcasts that you listen to, who who are the people that inspire you today in the podcast world? Okay. So let's start with, with mentorship. Um, I think from a mentor perspective, I'm not so much, I haven't been inspired as particularly by people in the, the technology world um, as much as I have been inspired by people in the kindness sphere. So I'd have to say someone like a Bill Gates is, is really intriguing to me because he blends all of the great things that he was doing with technology, but at the heart of it, he seems to be like a really kind man and and kind is what really does it for me in terms of who I'm looking um, to be like and model myself after. Um, in terms of podcasts, <laughs> there's a lot, like too many to name. Spark uh, with Nora Young is a good one. It's a, a, a technology pod that that takes a look at a lot of the same kinds of issues that that we're hoping to explore um, here uh, together. Revisionist history. I don't know if you've heard of that one with Malcolm Gladwell. Um, I love anything Malcolm Gladwell. So podcasts, books. Uh, I've seen him speak in person a couple of times. Um, Ear hustle. Uh, it's not related to technology at all, um, but it's definitely one that I go to every, I don't know, I listen uh, fairly regularly because it gives you a different view on on life. Um, and I know that both you and I love, love, love Professor G, uh, Scott Galloway. And I think for me, that's my best blog of the week because I, in addition to podcasts, I also read a lot of blogs, um, but his podcasts are great too. Yeah, I agree. I uh, I absolutely agree with you on Gates. He's a huge mentor. I've read all of his books as well. And, you know, I think you're spot on with Gladwell. I, I listen to, um, you know, Malcolm as well. I've read all of his books. I would say, you know, his books have had a lot of influence on my thinking and, and the thinking, I think, for the entire industry. Um, so those are some great ones. I mean, yeah. it uh, it really is a, it's a great list. 
He's Canadian, you know, Malcolm Gladwell. I know. I knew you were <laughs> going to say that. <laughs> okay. So my next big question for you, um, as we've said a couple of times now, I think the world is moving like super fast. Pressure to perform is high and leaders like you are juggling a ton of things. So I want to know, how do you do it? How do you, as an ISG exec, a husband, a dad, an intercontinental commuter, how are you managing the pace and the chaos of of your everyday life? <laughs> and then deciding to do a podcast as well, right? <laughs> right. And I forgot the dog. I forgot to mention the dog. <laughs> exactly. Guy would be upset about that. Yeah, you know, that's a really good question, Karen. And, you know, so many execs are incredibly busy. And I think we've all learned different techniques. So, so as you mentioned, you know, I wear a lot of different hats in the firm. I lead our European business. I lead our digital business. I lead our internal technology group. I'm a board member, et cetera. As you said, I'm an international traveler. I typically do 300 miles a year, which I love because that's when I listen to my podcasts and catch up on reading. So I've gotten behind on reading, quite frankly, with the pandemic because I'm not on airplanes so much. Um, you know, I live on two different continents and, and you have to balance all that with your your work life, your personal life. But, you know, it's as crazy as it sounds, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I am so passionate about what we do at ISG, but what this industry does and and just the impact that technology is having on everyday lives and how, you know, you, me, so many others have been so core to that through this last 20 years of this journey. It's it's so cool. Um but there's a ton of tricks that we learned. You know, I learned to manage my time. I've got an amazing wife that's been part of the craziness for 32 years. Um, I think she's got a choker chain around me, so she knows when I'm out of balance, she's got free reign to pull me back in, and that works. Um, the ISG family is amazing. We've just got some absolutely brilliant minds that all you have to do is give them just a little bit of juice, and they really unleash the creativity. I think from a really from an overall thought process within ISG and how we think about it, we've really been able to drive a lot of new ideas and new thought leadership just by unleashing the incredible talent that we have in the organization. And everybody knows that I've got my bouncing ball analogy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my bouncing ball analogy is that we all have to balance a hundred things, sometimes a thousand things at the same time, and something is going to drop. And you just got to be okay with that and just recognize it and and don't seek perfection in everything, but something's going to drop. The trick is to really understand the difference between the rubber balls and the glass balls. You know, the rubber ones are going to bounce back, but if you drop one of the glass ones and they shatter, you know, oftentimes you're damaging a relationship. And and from my perspective in business and consulting in life, you know, damaging the relationships is probably the worst. You know, you can have a bad day, you can do things and have a bad deliverable, you can get a number wrong or different things. But when you drop the glass balls that really damage the relationship, that those those are hard to recover from. So, you know, that that's probably my best advice. I'm also a little bit of a perfectionist, especially when it comes to, you know, my consulting and, and try to do. So I always remind myself that perfection is neither attainable nor desirable. And this really help me, you know, helps manage with time management. Um, mm -hmm. Even when I was in university, I would spend, you know, two more hours on a program or a math problem or something to get an A++ when I probably could have stopped two hours earlier and just been fine. So <laughs> there, there's this point of diminishing returns that probably took me a little longer than the normal person to understand. Yeah. What is it they say? Perfection is the enemy of the good sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes you want to go for perfection um, and it's the right thing to do. But it's not always the right thing to do. And I I actually mentor a lot of um, of our younger staff here at ISG. And uh, I often talk about Steve and your glass and your rubber balls to, to everyone. Because it's, you gave me that advice, me personally, I don't yep. know, three, three or four years ago. I think I was having a bad day and I called you and I'm like, how do you do it all? And that was the advice you gave to me. And it's. It's probably the best business advice, advice I've ever gotten. So thank you. No, yeah. you're welcome. You're, you're very welcome. I think too many times people look at tricks for how they manage their calendar or how they manage their to-do list or say that they're going to wake up every morning and make their new list and do these. And those work for different people. But it all comes down to really priorities and recognizing that all of us in this space are incredibly busy 
And what are those important things? And I think relationships are the most important things or the most enduring. Um, and making sure that rubber ball, glass ball analogy just always works. And I can look at every issue and and mentally, and sometimes I even toss them up in my air, in the air, if you can see me on video, and I say, is this a rubber or a glass? And and if it's a glass, I take care of it. And I make sure I, you know, whether it's a call, what, whatever the key point, point is. Mm -hmm. And if it's a rubber, you know what? I, I don't necessarily stress about it the way that I used to. And it's it's freeing in a sense. You got to still take care of those but you got some time and, and that analogy really helps me. Yeah. You know what? I think it helps other people too, because they know that that's your philosophy and they know that sometimes they are the rubber ball, but they'll catch you on the flip side. Yep. Right. So yeah. it's it. Yeah, no, it's great. So you uh, are moving really fast. The world is moving really fast. And that means what we do like in terms of, of working is also changing and moving really fast. So I've been finding it super exciting lately to be sort of at the forefront of what an enterprise can do. And I like taking the stories that I learn from when I'm at a customer and sharing those, you know, with other customers and sharing them with this, with this audience. You know, the pandemic has taught us so much and I'm not going to rehash a lot of what, you know, we've already learned and it's already been rehashed by people a lot smarter than me on it. But, you know, we figured out really quickly how to work from home. We figured out really quickly how to take care of people and connect with people on video and and show our empathy side. And as leaders, making sure that we were we were taking care of each other. You know, we learned how to from a logistics and a supply chain standpoint, really bring things up to speed and and get things going and you know globally we learned that we could connect with people in much different ways and be just of a just as efficient now there are clearly some organizations and some enterprises that have suffered you know terribly during this you know travel and transportation it's different getting on a cruise ship or an airplane it's different staying in a hotel and some of those companies regardless of what they do or regardless of the strength of their leadership they, they haven't had time to completely reposition their business to do it, right? United Airlines can start, you know, shipping cargo to pick up some of that stuff, but that's not something that can flip overnight for them. So, so there's different things. I think CEOs and technology execs have been more challenged during this period than, quite frankly, any point in their careers. I think what we saw during 2008, 2009 with the financial crisis was just really a dry up of capital and, and access to capital was limited. So people had to cut back and rethink how they spent it. What we saw here was just complete business models changed overnight. And how you thought through those business models directly impacted your success. I think, you know, when I look back at 2020, April, May, June was absolutely crisis mode. You know, as one of the senior leaders in ISG, I spent every day for, you know, almost the first hundred days in crisis mode. We met every day as a leadership team. I followed up with people every day. I was probably working 12 to 14 hours a day, even as I was dealing with COVID and other people were dealing with, with COVID and being, being sick or ill ourselves. But I think that's what it called for at that time in that crisis leadership mode that so many people did. But in July, people really took a deep breath. And I think what they did is they assess where do we want to go? Where do we need to make the investments? And what does that feel like now to work in an organization that's worked from home, that's new, digitally enabled through collaboration experience and thinking through more importantly, what are their new products? How do they connect with their supply chains? How do they connect with their customers and clients? And that really forced sort of a rethinking of what we did, um, more creativity, more balance and and really change the the market in such a good way. Um, it was funny because I was having a, a great conversation with the uh, the CEO of Wipro uh, Theory. Uh, I think it was his first week, and uh, Theory tells me he says, "Steve, this is brilliant." He says, "I've been to L.A., I've been to San Paulo, I've been to Rome, and I'm headed off to Munich, and it's it's only it's only three hours into the day." And I start laughing. I said, "Theory, what are you talking about?" He says, I've met leaders that I would never have a chance to talk to. I've talked to my teams in ways that I've never had to talk to because I'm not spending time on planes. I'm not spending time, 
you know, worried about how to connect with people and do things. I'm just being me and talking and being real. And, and you know what? He was right. And uh, I think all of us have learned that and we've all been successful because of that. And, and let's focus on those things that are, that are important as we go forward. Yeah. So I think what I'm, I'm hearing you talk about, if I were to like to distill it into a few words is the crisis in the pandemic, after we got through that initial, you know, um, panic, because I think that's you know what a lot of a lot of people were doing. You guys responded to that in crisis mode, but then it kind of opened up some opportunity for us to get creative, right? And I think our clients as well. Um, it it provides an opportunity for some creativity, some reimagining the way that they operate um, as businesses. And I. You know, I love the fact that we are able to help clients um, and co-create with them while they're on that journey. So I think that's it's important and it's it's pretty cool. Um, I have another question for you. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about what's coming up on the podcast later this year? Yeah, absolutely. I think because we're both so excited about what we've lined up and the direction that we're taking this podcast. So we've already kicked off the year with a bang, as you know. So we had David Howey, who's the chief commercial officer for the NHSX in England on the role that technology played in the pandemic. And what was brilliant about that is we had a great conversation about the track and trace program within England and, and the UK and really future ideas for the immunization passports, which are becoming so important now that we've we've got the vaccines rolling out. And I think I just heard J&J &J was approved. So that's going to even accelerate the, the global rollout, which is brilliant. Then we had a great discussion with Nitin Rakesh that I mentioned, the CEO of Emphasis. Mm -hmm. He wrote a great book called Transformation in Time of Crisis. So we really explored his eight principles for creating opportunities and the value of the post-pandemic world. Um, and I think you're going to continue to see that. You know, everybody that knows me knows that I'm an avid reader. And I suspect we'll continue to have some great industry authors and industry thought leaders as guests on the shows as we go forward. Yeah. Speaking of good books, um, I think we're also going to be interviewing a couple of folks from Cognizant and talking about the book, What to Do When Machines Do Everything. Um, that book really tries to answer the questions that are on everybody's mind these days. Is a robot going to take my job? You know, our knowledge workers like you and me, are we going to become obsolete? Uh, what kind of future will our kids experience? Uh, will, will they be better off than we are now? So I'm pretty excited about that one coming up. I think that one's going to be so cool. You know, we're, we're paying our own producers, so we don't have a professional person yet, you know, making all the calls. But it looks like we're going to be able to get Malcolm Frank or Paul Roaring um, on the podcast in March, maybe early April. I think that's going to be a fascinating conversation. So I'm yeah. really excited about that one. Um, but, you know, I think we're also going to explore some other key themes. I think transformation is going to continue to be a hot topic this year. We're going to talk to lots of thought leaders on how organizations are keeping pace with the need to go digital, if you will. I think the pandemic accelerated transformation and hopefully the leaders that we bring on, it's really going to be a great pulse check on the industry and where organizations are at different points on the journey. Yeah. In addition to uh, bringing us COVID-19 and all that entailed, <laughs> 2020 was also remarkable because of how uh, people embraced the Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, they didn't embrace it just as a moment in history, but I think they really did embrace it as a movement. Um, and I think that wake up call or, or call to action, whatever you want to call it, inspired people all over the world as evidenced by the the corporate world's growing mandate and interest in diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mentioned that earlier. Um, and DEI is definitely a theme that um, we'll be going, we will explore in this year's series. You, you are so inspiring, Karen. I, <laughs> I just love the way that you, you think through and the way that you give back and you, you're so right about DEI, DEI. And I know the passion that you have for it and it is really shaping our thinking. Um, and we've seen people that don't appreciate that what's happened when it's so clear that you're not connected with the, the bigger movements. You know, I think corporate social responsibility and CSR programs are going to continue to shape the industry as well. 
Um, I'm current. You mentioned Bill Gates, but I'm currently reading his new books on how to avoid a climate disaster. And it's fascinating because it's really about a huge technology challenge for the industry. And I think that will also be a key theme because what we're seeing across, um, you know, both Americas, uh, Europe, EMEA, Asia PAC, et cetera, is this real responsibility, whether it's, you know, through DEI capabilities or CSR capabilities, really driving how we give back. And I think it's redefining in many ways organizations and, you know, who the true shareholders are. That's awesome. You know, we have in our our firms and in our companies, we have sort of practice building initiatives. Um, these are really world building initiatives, right? So I'm super excited that we're going to be uh, exploring a bunch of those. I think, you know, I might be wrong, but I think we're going to learn a lot this year. I think we're going to have some fun um, and hopefully do the same for our audience. You and I are super open to feedback. So if the listening, uh, our listening audience out there has some suggestions for upcoming episodes, don't hesitate to reach out to us through our website. We're always open to a good idea. Thanks again, Steve, for asking me to be a part of Imagine uh, Your Future Ride. And I'm really looking forward to our journey. Oh, my gosh. Thank you to you, Karen, for accepting it. I, I knew when I was creating this that I wanted you as my co-host and partner through this. And I was so happy that you said said yes and, and brought your your excitement and knowledge and, and all you bring to the party. So thank you. Oh, so okay. any closing thoughts from you? Well, just the usual reminder for our listeners. So on behalf of the team here, um, thanks for lending us your ears. And we want you to be on the lookout for our next episode coming to the podcast apps near you. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback. So please rate and review the podcast. That's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.